All right, so now that I'm thoroughly embarrassed, I'm so sorry about this sound thing. It seems to crop up only when I haven't got enough sleep, but I'm gonna be putting an extra note up to myself to not do that again. Anyway, we're back with sound. Hello, it is still Mailbag Monday and I still haven't opened this package. So let's talk about what Belena Fan is. It is a carrier board for the Raspberry Pi Compute Module 3 and 3 Lite, which turbocharges it with all these features like you have more Wi-Fi options, you have more Bluetooth options, you have uh, tons of onboard storage, you can get 8, 16, 32, or 64 gigs of it. Kind of incredible. And there is a an ARM Cortex-M4 coprocessor, which you can use to shut the Raspberry on and off if you are in a situation where you really want to conserve power, for example, so if you're running it off of solar power or something else, in which case also you can, uh, it can take a much wider range of voltages for input, so it can take between, what does it say, somewhere in here, 6 volts to 24 volts, which is especially useful in applications where a reliable 5 volt source is not usually available. So if you're doing something ridiculous with solar panels, you can snap something like this together in the field. So these are actually the people who used to be called resin.io and created the wonderful etcher tool, which if you're not familiar with it, really helps with burning SD cards, for example, for Raspberry Pis. And so I've used this all the time. I basically never do any other installation method for Raspberry Pi software now. Um, for the OS, I just download noobs and fire this up. You select the zip file, not even unarchived. Select the SD card, in, drive in your computer, and then you hit flash and it does it all. It's beautiful. So this, I have high hopes for it because they clearly know what they're doing, at least in terms of software. Mm, you can check this all out at balena.io, and that means whale, so it kind of makes sense that it's the whale fin or whatever. Cool. All right, so let's get this thing open. I've had enough embarrassment for today with forgetting that stupid sound off again. Ugh. I swear the first couple of times there were actual technical issues, but this time, this time it was all me. So this is the Balena Fin giant box that they sent me, and they have all these warnings about, ah, batteries! Um, and they've wrapped the whole thing in about 18 pounds of cling wrap, so let's have at it. <laughs> this is really fun, actually. Thank you to everyone who told me my sound was off again. I checked this time, and uh, yeah. And I do have audio feedback there, so. <sighs> it's because I've been doing a ton of sweet interviews, actually, which means that I have to swap around the microphones which makes it very easy to switch to another type of microphone and um, then the one that I usually use gets disabled. That is the problem. But it's for a good reason, which means that there's lots of other cool interviews for you to look at. We've got more coming up for you as well. So last week we talked to Mingjing Huang, who's an amazing professional engineer turned consultant. She works on giant Burning Man projects and tiny little wearable devices like the Basis Watch and Apple tablets and stuff like that. Nokia phones. This is taking forever, by the way. Ah! She's super cool. So that was last week's Hackster Cafe, which came out on Tuesday. And then we also, on Friday, had... Ah, here we go. We had Electrospit, Bosco and Maya Kanze from Electrospit, with their cool talk box device. This is so clean and pretty. Okay. Now I want to wrap all my mail in <laughs> yards of cling wrap so it arrives pristine. So this is not going to be centered yet. It's still just going to be the little Belena logo. But let's cut this open and then we can have a look. They've even got their own branded tape. Like, how pro is that? It's ridiculous. 
the boxes open. We have a bunch of packing materials here. And ooh! Wow! Ah, this is a kind of really, really fitted to the box here, so I'm gonna have to kind of pull it out. I'm wedging my little fingers in there. Ah! All right, and that's all that's in there. Cool. So. I clearly have not cleaned <laughs> the wires off of my desk since the last time I built something. Just pretend that that's not there. Let's do more of the focus. Yes, that's beautiful. Okay. Look at this pretty purple packaging. It's slightly purpler than you see here. It really does kind of match the website. It's less blue and more reddish, pinkish. But yeah, let's open So you go to balenafin.io slash getting dash started, which is also linked from the main page of the company. You just go to, actually in this case, yeah, it links you to balena.io slash fin slash 1.1 slash doc slash getting dash started. Um, but you know, you can just click the link <laughs> uh, at the top right here and you'll be taken to this place where it tells you what you will need to get started. And you can also take a look at the contents of the developer kit. Oh man, I can't believe they sent me this whole thing. Ah, uh, the back of it just says attach shipping label here. Very exciting. <laughs> the sides have the logo on it and the back has a bunch of the um, certification marks on here, like the FCC and whatnot. Cool. Oh! It's still listed as resin.io as the company. <laughs> you can see vestiges of their former selves. Okay. So, wow, it comes with a really pretty case. Look at this thing. Look at it. This probably isn't the first thing I should be opening, but it's what I'm doing because I got excited about it. Wow, look at this. You've even got a little insert for an LED there to sort of shine through without letting water in. You've got this top that kind of snaps on here. Oh yeah, that goes right down to the board, huh? Wow. You've even got a built-in power thingamajig. Look at that! Barrel jack connector with a little waterproof seal on it. Gasket, whatever you call it. Wow. Which way does this go? <laughs> I've already forgotten, but you can always uh, look at the docks, I'm sure. Now these look like they would be for buttons, but they are just things that seem to snap out, I think. You've got hardware included, so you can screw it all together. You've got a little spot for the um, heat to come through, air circulation, more vents in the sides. All right, enough of that. I'm so sorry, I'm not doing your packaging justice. <laughs> this looks like a power supply box. It's quite heavy. I'm doing the most boring stuff first, I'm sorry. I should really start with the main event, but mm, here's... We're, we're building suspense, right? So anyway, here's our little power supply. It comes with your international plugs to just snap on. Why am I doing it in this order? I don't know. Just grab whatever. Okay, so take this bad boy, put it like so, and just snap it on. Done. All right. Okay, 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 okay. I'm not going to torture you by doing the cables first. Here is the Belena fin itself. It's beautiful purple box. Again, they've got the link to getting started. So you could presumably sell this as its own little separate device, its own skew. We have our anti-ESD bag. Oh, cool. Now I don't actually have a Raspberry compute module in the office, so we may or may not actually be able to test this out. 
but it, it does look gorgeous. You've got the slot for the compute module there. Where's our ARM Cortex thingamajig? This is a SanDisk thing, that must be our memory. Mm. <laughs> this is, I think this is the mini PCIe slot for uh, some kinds of wireless networking. You have display slash cam one, cam zero, HDMI out. Cool, oh yes! <laughs> this is really exciting to me, actually, because I've been wanting to do a project that uses two cameras with the Raspberry Pi. And a while ago, I got frustrated because you have to use the compute module for that. You can't do it with a regular Raspberry Pi. And so the fact that this already has two camera connectors on it is really exciting. <laughs> Nefarious plans. A little spot for a coin cell battery. Um, you've got your little wireless guys. Here's a connector for an external antenna. V1.1.0. Oh my god, they even color coded! Look, they color coded the Raspberry Pi headers. That's ridiculous. Where's my focus? Come back. Look how beautiful. Is that like enamel or varnish or stickers or what? Wow. That is so cool. So it looks like all the. Mm, GPIO pins are the green ones, then you've got like, this is maybe, I don't have it memorized, it might be RX and TX or something, then you got power over here, black is ground, yellow I'm not sure, maybe that's like, mm, not sure. Another communication protocol maybe. This looks like it might be the SIM card slot, perchance. Oh yeah, NSIM. Right there, you've got a bunch of little LEDs along here. These look like they are status LEDs that are already sort of assigned for things. So you've got one, LAN, so like wireless area network, local area network, PAN, which I thought usually stands for like personal area network, but might mean something else in this context. Um, you've got couple of other things I'm not sure about. You've got 3v3 and 5 volt um, voltage indicators. And then you have this dimmable RGB LED. Apparently it's new and cool that that thing is dimmable. <laughs> there are a couple of standoffs on the back. I assume in case you want to mount something along here. And yeah, a little fuse! Look at this! You've got... A, I think that's a fuse. Either that or it's like a replaceable configurable capacitor or something. I bet it's a fuse. That's so cool. This is really tough then. Then you also have an ethernet port with little status LEDs. So fancy. And a couple of USB ports as well. Wow, this is super nice. And then you have a little dip switch over here that's covered in Kapton tape labeled int and ext, presumably internal and external or something or other. Oh, this is a coprocessor, cool. Neat. Ah, oh, this is beautiful. And then you've got another barrel jack, which, um, and this plugs into the enclosure as we saw earlier. So EXP, does that mean it's like exposing GPIOs or something? I'm not sure. But yeah, again, this power thing is labeled 6 to 30 volts. That's actually more than it says on the website, I think, which was like 6 to 24. What does it say? <laughs> Yeah, it says 6 to 24 input range on the website here. But maybe you can go up to 30 if you're doing something specific with it. So yeah, it supports the Raspberry Compute Module 3 and 3 Plus Lite. Now let's see if there is a Compute Module in here or if I'll have to postpone this to buying one online. And I can show you where you can... Oh, it's in here! Oh, that's so cool! I still have to actually postpone this until another day. But that's really exciting! My camera dreams are going to become a reality. This is so, this is so exciting. You've got a CR1225, which is um, a smaller but thicker coin cell battery than a 2032. That's presumably so that you can keep the whole thing running or maybe even just the internal clock running even if you have most of it powered down. I bet it's for an RTC, yeah. So here you have my previous B cable. You know what those are, presumably. You better know what that is. So yeah, compute module. Oh, this is like the most exciting day 
editor because it enables this really cool project I've been wanting to do. Okay, it has to do with stereo cameras and basically what I want to do is emulate the human 3D vision experience, like a 3D camera basically, but with long exposures so you can do 3D light paintings. Um, you might have experienced that painting program you can use in the Vive or um, the Oculus Rift and I want to make that but with real life where basically you can move around in 3D space, move lights around and you'll be able to perceive the depth of the image by looking at it later. Uh, this is really <laughs> exciting. I can't wait. Uh, that does not actually require any of the wireless, but maybe I'll end up transmitting the photos over Wi-Fi or Bluetooth or something to another device so that they can be displayed. Man! I love it when you get new tech that enables projects that you've had in mind for years and years because, you know, that's often the case. You get, you have the idea and then it's like, oh sure, I could build that. I would need to order all this stuff and learn all these new things. And then um, after long enough, sometimes it just shows up on your doorstep. Even like, obviously my job has a large part to do with that. But even back in the day, being kind of a hackerspace scavenger, you would sometimes get stuff donated that would help with projects you wanted to build, which is always an exciting day. Let me make sure I'm not going to totally kill this thing when I put Oh, you don't have to push it in. You just uh, snap it down like that. Beautiful. And there's obviously only way, one way to put it in because of this little divider there. Oh, this is so exciting. <laughs> Thank you, guys! Ah! Balana Finn, everyone. This is a very exciting piece of technology. Not just as a breakout board for the compute module, although that is very exciting. You get it, it turned into basically your standard Raspi with the two cameras already broken out in the HDMI and all your standard ports, except a couple fewer USB ports than usual. Um... And you get all this extra connectivity stuff and extra storage and an extra ARM Cortex that you can use to... Cortex M4, which is pretty good, that you can turn, use to turn it on and off and do other things or maybe offload some processing to that. Wow! What a cool device. All right, everybody go check out Balena Finn. It's got one L. Yeah, take a look at the website again. Balena Finn. Uh, or balena.io slash fin and you can go get that on the website. I think it's about $200. Am I right? I'm right. Mm. And then you can download the data sheet, go to the getting started to see how to get started. I'm going to do that basically immediately <laughs> after ending this stream and then look at the, um, yeah, up to 65 of you lucky humans can have one as soon as possible. All right, thanks for watching. Thanks for bearing with me through all the sound problems. I don't have any more like of the oh no, I have another weird interview tomorrow, but I'm gonna be checking extra to make sure that the sound is good, okay? We're gonna make sure that doesn't happen again. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I'll see you tomorrow. Ciao.